While the list is long of things that many of us miss about classic vehicles, here let's talk about one element that I'll say I in particular miss, and that is true hardtop styling. You really can't get it unless you want to pay a lot for a very expensive vehicle these days. And I'll show it by showing these two 1974 Mercury's. This brown one is a true four-door hardtop, and the red one is what Ford called a pillared hardtop. And here you can see the brown one. There's no pillar in the middle there of the glass between the front and rear glass, whereas the red one, you can see there is a pillar. This is something that stopped, at least for Fords, in 1974. This was the last year for any hardtops. A number of other automakers continued for a few more years, like Chrysler with their New Yorker Brome, continued with true hardtop styling through the 1978 model year. But you can see here the red vehicle, as I mentioned, has that pillar, and the brown one does not. Let's explore and walk around these cars a little bit more to discuss them in greater detail. And let's use this opportunity to compare these 1974 Mercury's and their options against the 1972 Mercury Marquis in the back and the 68 Park Lane Brome you see there. Now, you can see that both of these 74 Mercury's are obviously similarly styled, but here, let's take a look at the interior of this hardtop. Again, there's no pillar between the front and rear glass. When you put the glass down, see here, you can see the pillar in the red one. You have true open air styling, and it's just wonderful to drive these vehicles on the road. You also have, you can see here, the standard two-spoke steering wheel with no controls on it. Conversely, you have the cruise control wheel. This one has rim blow horn as well, while the other one does not. You can see the buttons there on the wheel in the red car. This four-door has this wonderful brocade cloth. It's kind of patterned off of the 1960 Buick Electra limited cloth, I think. Tons of space in the front and the rear, while over here, you can see the vinyl seat. It's the same pattern, a one-year only seat pattern. This was the first year where Ford didn't have the twin comfort lounge seats with the high back buckets after having that from 1971 to 73. And this car has manual air conditioning. You can see it has vent, AC, high lows, kind of a bi-level position if you're a GM person. No speakers in the doors, just a one-speaker AM radio whereas the brown car has the automatic temperature control. You can see in the middle there that it says the temperature when you move the dial at the top, and it has an AM FM radio with the speakers in the doors. Now let's take a quick walk around here of some of the other Mercury's. This is a 1972 Marquis Brome hardtop coupe. Again, a hardtop. It does not have that pillar between the front and rear glass, which you can see here. It's just open. So no pillar at all. Oftentimes on these, the windows don't go down. And from 75 and later, they actually did not go down. But 72, they did. And you can see this car has a different dash than the 74s that we were looking at. 1971 and 72 Mercury's have a different dash from the LTDs. They commonized the dashboard aside from the top pads in 1973. I think it's pretty handsome as well as this cloth great seat pattern. This car does not have the optional twin comfort lounge seats, just has the bench with dual armrests. It has this fuzzy, I guess, velour headliner in 1972, which has an interesting texture to it. And by 1974, they had switched to this textured vinyl headliner. You can also see the dome light in the middle there, which the 72 did not have. This 74 has a dome light in the same textured vinyl, but it's a different dome light. It has the optional reading lights, and you can see the seat belts are anchored into the roof as opposed to being anchored into the pillar on this car. And you do have lights in the C-pillar there. See, when you open the door, they illuminate. That was around in 72 and before as well. This is a 1968 Park Lane Brome. It's the last year for the Park Lane, last year for the Park Lane Brome. You got this beautiful optional interior with this biscuit pleating on the seats. I got this car from Maine of all places. And these are super rare today, but extra comfortable. And if you're a fan of the original Hawaii Five-O show, this is the car that Jack Lord drove. You can see there's two vents here on the driver's side, but not on the passenger side. This car has what's called Comfort Stream, 
air system, which put those two vents on the driver's side. It does not have air conditioning. And it does have the safety door handle as well. And the doors close very nicely on this vehicle. Again, 68 was the last year for this styling theme. I love the vertical taillights on Mercury's. They only did that for a few years, and in 1969, that would change. On this 1972, you can see the styling is very different from the 74s in front of it, and there's not really all that protective of a bumper. These 71s and 2s also have this valence panel beneath the bumper that's pretty flimsy. It used to catch a bunch of snow and distort. This car was never driven in the snow. It was originally from Virginia. But you can see the 72 bumper compared to these 74 bumpers in the rear. These, some people call them railroad ties. They're so large. By this point, and you can also see in the 72, the front bumper is relatively small, although it does have bumper guards. But in 74, they did have five mile an hour impact standards front and rear, which led to these very, very large bumpers. So check out the size of the front bumper there on the red and brown marquee compared to either the 68 or the 72. Both of the marquee, the 74 marquee, have the optional turbine vane wheel covers. Neither actually came with it. I found both of those sets, and I just love them. I think, especially on the red car, you have to have them with the red centers. It just really sets the car off. And by this point, you can see they have similar roof lines. On the 68, at some point I'll show, I have a 68 Park Lane Brome hardtop, which you just saw, and I also have a sedan, and the sedan roof line is higher. Typically... The sedan roof line was higher, but by the 70s era, the roof lines were about the same. Didn't really get much more height in the pillared sedan, or as Ford called it, the pillarless hardtop, than you did in the hardtop itself. Both, I think at least, great looking vehicles, and this brown one is identical to the car that was driven in the original Hawaii 5 series as well, the second car, but... That one was black. This one is obviously brown, but the black one was also four-door hardtop, marquee brome with a cloth interior. Can't imagine what a black vinyl interior would have been like in the Hawaii sun. Very masculine-looking front ends. I think the cars look great and definitely have a presence to them. Both have the body side molding. Both have cornering lights, too, which you can see, which were optional. And they both have hidden headlamps which are activated by a not-so-great system in 1974 with two headlight actuators that typically rot out. I've had these both replaced. The 71 and 2s have much better headlamp actuators before they transition to these, let's say, less-than-stellar ones in 1973. Hope you enjoyed this walk-around of these Mercuries and a bit more of an explanation on what makes a hardtop. Thanks again for watching. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.